it's sorry we started a little bit later than expected but we're going to get started hey alex hey thanks for joining us and guys if you're here entering in the live hashtag live and if you're here for the replay hashtag replay i have a very special guest today peter pru i heard his name kind of everywhere i watched some of his youtube videos um and he's very um big in the funnels plus e-commerce world and i know some of you guys are uh figuring out okay what funnel will work and some of you are trying e-commerce i figured hey this will marry your e-commerce uh, journey, whatever struggles you have with the funnel journey that you have. Um, so if you have any questions at all, let us know. For those of my group who don't know who you are, can you give us like a quick origin story? It doesn't really have to be quick, but uh, I want my group to get to know you. Well, let me go get expert secrets real quick and then I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I, uh, I call myself a 10 year overnight success story. Uh, every time I do an interview or something, because I've I've been in online marketing now for 10 years, uh, started in affiliate marketing when I was 18 years old, uh, and now it's over 10, it's, it's actually 11 years now, I'm getting old. Uh, <laughs> a freshman, a freshman year of college, learned about affiliate marketing, made a little bit of money during my college years, uh, really learned about like the possibility to make money online. Unfortunately, I wasn't making enough money to be able to, you know, go full time at this. So I had to go get a full time job after college. And that's when I kind of learned about e-commerce. Right. And I really for me, I wanted to build a business that's like on the up, like something that's scalable, something that's not necessarily can't be gone. Like, for example, like with and no offense, to any affiliate marketers, but like I wanted like I wanted all the money, like I wanted all the profit. Right. So I started uh, an Amazon FBA business. Uh, I took all the money I made from affiliate marketing, my life savings, wasn't much, it was probably only like $5,000. Uh, invested all of that into an Amazon FBA business. Make a long story short, within a year, uh, we flipped that investment and that business was doing around fifty to $80,000 a month. Um, however, and that was great. I thought, I thought I had everything figured out and that's like the worst thing about an entrepreneur. Like one piece of advice, like it's so easy when everything's going well to be like confident and to be like, feel like you have like perfect clarity and everything. But the second like things start going downhill, most entrepreneurs, they like can't take it. They can't, they can't, they feel like they're doing everything wrong and they can't see the positive and the negative. Uh, that's probably my hardest thing that whenever I, when I went full time eventually with this, uh, that, that transition was really tough. Um, but our Amazon FBA business got banned during that time, uh, lost that business, made the realization that if you're selling on Amazon right now, more power to you, but uh, make sure you understand that you're building Amazon's business and not your own, right? Like those are, those are Amazon's customers. You don't have any email addresses. You don't have any pixel data. You literally have nothing. Um, so you don't really have a business in my opinion if you just sell on Amazon. So uh, lost that business due to some false IP claims made against us. Oh um, no. <laughs> yeah, so it was like the wild west in Amazon and Amazon doesn't get caught up in legal battles. So they just trust if somebody makes like a claim against you that, that you're, you're, you're in the wrong. So you have to work it out with the seller at that or the person that made the claims, which is just such a pain. Um, so kind of went to a dark place for like about a year of this point in my life. I was blaming everybody but myself, uh, for my app, my business being gone. And uh, eventually, you know, some things happen. I don't, I don't need to go into them all, but started up a, uh, a storefront, right? My own business, right? Essentially uh, a business that I have full control of, that I have my own customer email addresses. I pixel them, all that stuff. I uh, was using Shopify or some, WooCommerce at the time. Um, and the problem was I still couldn't make money. Like I was making sales in the business, but I wasn't being profitable. And that's the thing with e-commerce that you have to realize is like, Numbers are so, so, so important in e-commerce because sometimes you're fighting on very low margins on a front end product when you, and, and then you're kind of delaying gratification to make money on like the back end. And I didn't realize this at the time. Cause I was like, I was just like focusing on this front end sale. Like I had no idea what a back end of a business was or anything. Um, so struggled a lot. Uh, I don't know if you know who Ryan Moran is though. And I was in his, I was in his mastermind group at this time. Ryan um, Moran. Yeah. So he's like, he was like an Amazon FBA. I don't know what he's up to now, but um, he was a pretty big Amazon FBA. Like he had a mastermind group and I was part of this e-commerce group that he was in. Um, I was still working full time, but there was a night where he had a, uh, like a team, a new software come in. Uh, and this was about four years ago and they were going to demo this new software that, that just came out and that was ClickFunnels. 
right, that oh. came to his mastermind group, showed this new software. I guess it was already launched. It was about four or five years ago now. And like the light bulb just started going off uh, for me, like seeing all the possibilities that like, okay, like this is how a business should go. Like you should just focus on like selling one specific product and like upselling di different things. And, and eventually like the, what I started doing was putting in like subscription into the funnels. So you get that, you know, that subscription based uh, revenue every single month. So you're not like fighting for the same customers every single month. Um, but at that point, uh, you know, I, I had, I had like 50 funnels that flopped. So I don't want people to, I'm trying to condense 10 years here. I'm trying, literally 10 years, uh, of this into like five minutes, but I've launched so many funnels. I've launched so many businesses. I've sold so many random things on the internet. Um, but it wasn't until I started using funnels and started a business that I was passionate about. Uh, did I find success? Like our two comma club was for our fishing business. It was for an e-commerce business that we, uh, that we had started and started using these funnels for. Um, and that's when I was finally able to quit my job and, you know, live the dream lifestyle. Right. <laughs> Which is kind of <laughs> like more stress than I was now than in, uh, than in my full time job, but that's besides the point. Um, but that's my, uh, that's my 10 years condensed into, uh, into five minutes here. That was very succinct. I think you, <laughs> I think you've gone through a couple of these interviews. <laughs> That's great. I got um, it scripted. <laughs> hey, Yulise. Hey, Frank. Hey, Phil. Um, hey, Ray. Thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, let uh, let me know in the comments. I'm gonna. Uh, we have interactive interviews here. And if you are joining us, smash the heart button so everyone else in the group knows that this is going on. Um, Peter Pru just told us his kind of like 10 year life story condensed into a couple of minutes. Um, and you know, I, I, the reason why I want to also bring you on is for my own selfish purposes. <laughs> like I wanna ask you uh, certain questions. I've noticed that a lot of people entering e-commerce and. I have a background in e-commerce too. I sell, actually I sell car parts. Um, I have a dismantling company with like physical workers and everything. And, and that's what I sell online. And uh, I just never think of uh, like that, okay, packaging certain things and having them go through one funnel. And I think for a lot of people entering into the e-commerce world, just starting off, they don't have that mentality. They think of, I, I think they just start off with drop shipping because mm -hmm. uh, they, it's just easy. They just throw a bunch of stuff on a site and they get going. Um, so uh, in your, in your journey though, how did you stumble upon the, how did you, uh, besides coaching, was it coaching that you invested in that made you see that that's the case and then how did you figure out like fishing uh selling fishing stuff is what you decided on because there's so many things you know trey yeah. llewellyn has flashlights mm -hmm. <laughs> like you know there's so many different verticals or different industries to go into why why the yeah. fishing market Yeah. So just to backtrack, cause you said like a lot of, a lot of things there. Like the first thing is like, I've, I've done the model where you just put a bunch of stuff on like a Shopify store and you just run a bunch of traffic that I don't, I don't recommend you do that model, right? Like that, that model for me is just so outdated. It, it worked maybe like three, four years ago. Um, but it's just, you can't do that anymore. So like for us, what I preach is like, and the thing is like, it's so skewed because a lot of, a lot of people watching this probably are in the click funnels community. When you read like these value ladders and all these things, you, you think that it needs to be like, Oh, more expensive, more expensive, more expensive. No, it doesn't need to be like that with e-commerce. You just need a front end offer, right? Like what's the offer? You could go find a best selling product, Amazon, wherever you need to go, find something that you're going to put out there. That's wrapped in like a good offer, right? Put some digital products in there, maybe access to a Facebook group, whatever. And that, right, is going to be like that front end offer that's acquiring you customers consistently. It's essentially evergreen, right? And then you have multiple back end funnels that doesn't, it doesn't need to sell more expensive things, right? You could just put like your buyers through a different sequence where maybe you're selling them um, a, a new funnel that you're testing out before you put it out as a front end offer. Like it doesn't always necessarily need to be as cut and dry as, as you see it. Like, oh, this is, you know, my first step of my value ladder is only $10 and this one has to be like 100 You know, it doesn't, with e-commerce, it's not like that. 
Uh, the most important part of any business before I start any e-commerce business, like we're launching our supplement business uh, next month, uh, continuity, right? Always have to have some sort of reoccurring revenue subscription model in an e-commerce business, anything, even in info, in, in my coaching. Like I would never start anything unless I can somehow continue getting money from my current customers, okay? Now, to go back to the main question, which is how I discover phishing. So uh, when I was selling on Amazon, I was just selling the most random things. Like I was selling like, like there was like five or six different kinds of like Montessori toys that we were selling. We were selling like, we were selling flashlights. We were selling like little bracelets. We were selling so many things and nothing. And we made sales because you don't need to be a good marketer. You don't need to be really good at anything to sell stuff on Amazon. I don't mean to offend anybody like that, but you don't have to really understand like how to drive traffic like all those yeah. things are just so foreign it's just like oh it's free sales and i love amazon I, I recommend people sell on amazon but after you have your own customers right after you have your own customers you can launch a you know a new product on amazon drive traffic to it give people a coupon code and let tell them to leave you a review or whatever right you get ranked a lot faster that way yeah, um, yeah. but i discovered phishing because like when i had lost the amazon fba business i made a realization i was like no one cared like I was gone, right? Like I was gone, but no one cared. Like not one single person cared. Like I was gone. My business was gone, but it's not like, oh, my customers are like, oh man, where did that business go? Like, you know, no one cared. Like I was just a complete commodity business where uh, my customers were going to have their needs met by somebody else. And that just was like, man, that you, you got to like accept that though. Like sometimes like if you're, if your customers can go somewhere else and have their needs met, then you are a commodity in my opinion. Uh, and yeah. that's why it goes back to like, okay, what's the offer? What, what can we put in there to help our customer get a result that they want? Like, so for fishing, right? Like what's the result? They want to catch bigger fish. They want to catch more fish, but it, it goes deeper than that, right? You got to go like that seven layers deep, right? Because a lot of them, like that market, I know that they want to like post their pictures on social media. They want to get likes. They want to get shares. They want to like, you know, you know, have a good time on maybe their first outing with their, with their kid uh, on it. So the reason I chose fishing was because like for me, like my dad uh, took me fishing every single weekend when I was growing up. Uh, I'm not going to go and say, oh, we were like the poorest of the poor. I definitely was not poor, but we definitely didn't have a lot of money growing up. Uh, so like that was like a cheap thing that, you know, my parents took me to do because we couldn't afford like doing like sports leagues and stuff like that. Uh, so for me, it was like a passion of mine. Like I, I still love doing it. I love going fishing. Um, we've hosted a bunch of different kind of events and stuff like that in the past. Uh, for kids to come out and go fishing. Um, and that was just like, for me, when I started a business, I was like, I don't even care if this business succeeds or fails. I'm going to have fun doing it. And you have to come from that place. Like the, the, the students that I do have that find like a lot of success come from that place where it's like, you should have fun building your business. Not like, like always just being like, of course we want to make money. We want to make sales, but like, it's not something the most important thing always. Right. It's about like, also like having fun with it because you're the marketing every like the social media posts writing emails all that stuff is going to become a lot more easier it's going to be a lot more fun for you uh, and if you're in a niche that you hate or you know nothing about you have no expertise in it's going to be like pulling teeth right it's, it's going to be yeah. awful i would like imagine like if i was like in like the, the jewelry niche or something like that like i know nothing about that like how am i going to write emails how am i going to communicate to this customer how am i going to run ads create video ads create everything Right. So that's my, that's how I decided uh, to pick fishing to, uh, to get into. Okay. I'm beginning to see, um, let me change the view. I'm beginning to see that your approach to the e-commerce world is very similar to the way uh, software is sold. Um, it's like, you're not only selling that software, that digital download, you're selling the community around it, um, the results that they want to get to. Um, and uh, when I just started applying some of those concepts myself in, for my own software, I have a software that collects leads from Facebook groups. Um, I had a Facebook group that says, this is only for users. But when I change that around and say, hey, this is for those who want to grow their Facebook group, and by the way, here's a software. Do you try this software that actually helps you to do it? That's when I started seeing a lot more conversions from people funneling into that world to learn that thing. But then it, the, the tool helps them get there. And then there's like training on how to grow your Facebook group and everything like that. So I'm beginning to, from talking to you, I'm beginning to like connect the dots that maybe this, 
idea of um, uh, providing all that value around the product reaches beyond just my little world of digital. It, it reaches into e-commerce, into all the physical. Um, am I, does that, yeah, am no, I getting it kind of right? The thing is like, especially in e-commerce, right? Like so many people are just commodities, right? They're like, okay, I'm going to go sell flashlights or I'm going to go sell fishing lures or whatever. And they don't understand like, and this is what I mean that I don't blame people to not, they don't understand this because like when I try and take myself back, you know, five, six years from now, I had no idea. Like I, I wouldn't even understand what this means, right? Like, Oh, like creating an offer, like putting in digital products, like all that stuff is really intimidating for people that are just getting into any business model. Uh, so for them to hear that, it's kind of like a little bit more, more difficult, but yes, our goal is to decommoditize ourselves, right? That's what the offer allows you to do. So like different things that you can add in are like, you know, digital products, right? Things that they find valuable. Don't just throw more things into like a shopping cart, right? That's, it's not about that. It's about strategically pl putting those things in there, right? Cause they're, if they're trying to uh, like catch more fish or catch bigger fish, like, and I'm selling them a fishing lure, right? Like what else can I put in there? Like I could put in like, okay, like how to tie this thing, like what weather to use this in, Hey, what kind of fish is going to catch? Like all those different kinds of things, maybe like a, like a hook sharpening tool or replacement hooks for the fishing lure, like different things like that to help them use the one, use the product. Cause a lot of people buy stuff and then they never use it. So yeah. you want to get them to use it right? Get success with it. So they come back, right? I always love to have a community aspect in my offer as well, because getting your customers into like a Facebook group, you obviously know the importance of a Facebook group, getting those people into a Facebook group is so powerful. And I like to actually like just side note, I like to have two Facebook groups, have one for your, your, your customers, right? And or three, you could have one for your, like a general like page that just talks about fishing. Then you have like your customer group and then you have like your continuity members group and always have them teasing, Hey, come inside the continuity members, uh, Facebook group. Um, so that, that's, uh, that's extremely powerful. And then as for your software example, we do something similar. So on our upsells, I always sell subscription in an upsell, at least for e-commerce people hate the subscription model. Most of the time, unless you're like a fab fit fun dollar shave club, like where you're really cool, unique. I always recommend you get that first. Yes. Do like a free plus shipping offer, a deep discount offer first to get customers in the door, get them saying yes, and then sell them uh, the subscription in an upsell. I always like to do some sort of trial or some freebie that I'm going to throw into their first box. So it could be like, Hey, get this free, uh, you know, introductory, you know, fishing lure, uh, golf magazines do this extremely well. They're like, Hey, sign up for a year subscription. We're going to give you a free golf bag. Like, Oh, look, take inspiration from multiple places and see, Hey, what works for you? You could do dollar trials. You could do, you know, $7, seven day trials, dollar trials, just to speak on those, um, is you'll typically get like 30, 30, 40% conversion rate. That means like out of four, you know, a hundred buyers, like 40 people will join your continuity program, but your churn rate will be higher. So people will, you know, they'll, they'll leave faster, but uh, usually you can make up the difference. So uh, my, one suggestion is always make sure that you're being uh, 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 upfront with your customers, like that they're getting billed on a subscription, a continuity plan. You do not want to get like your Stripe account, your PayPal accounts uh, banned. If you're not like being like telling them, um, that they're going to get billed, right? A lot of people, like, they'll sneak it in places. Yeah. Uh, like, they won't tell you. It'll be, like, really small print that says, uh, you know, like, hey, you'll be billed, you know, forty nine 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 in seven days. And they, they, they try to hide it. A lot, I see a lot of companies doing that. Um, but, yeah, that, that's my uh, – that, that's kind of, like, to answer that question. That's a really good tip. And, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks, Yulise uh, and Judy. And, hey, Daryl. If you guys are here live, smash the heart button and um, let us know. I'm going to go to one of your questions in a bit, but I want to kind of touch on what Peter just said. He said that for Facebook groups, he likes three uh, different groups. And in my head, I don't even have three for my product. It, I just have a community one. And that really opens my eyes to, okay, you need a continuity group who are people who are paying for subscription, right? That's a continuity one. And then a general community one. And what was that third one? Um, so so it, it's a general one that just is public. The thing is a customer one and then a uh, continuity member. Okay. Here, let me tell you something. I, cause I'm, I'm new into this 
coaching business, consulting business. Yeah. I run this business exactly how I run my e-commerce business. I have three groups. I have my public e-commerce empire builders group. I have my customer group and then I have my inner circle group, right? Three groups, right? It's customer, then my continuity inner circle people, right? And every time somebody joins like, hey, you know, joins your, your monthly continuity plan or joins you as a customer, have them post in that public group. Right? You're trying to extract those people, tease them into being like, wait, what's going on in there, right? Curiosity, huge hook, right? And especially when people see other people, you know, buying from you, um, especially if you're doing like any digital stuff, like courses or whatever, coaching, I would recommend that as end for e-com. I, I literally run the businesses the same way. It doesn't matter what I'm selling. Yeah. And um, another thing, another tip that he said that was really important was, always get into a subscription based model and hook them in with something as simple as like a dollar uh, for to subscribe for the first month for a huge discount, just a dollar. Or like a freebie box. You can give them like a break even. So let's say your first box might cost, you know, seven bucks, but I just give it to them for seven because you'll eventually know your numbers. Um, and another idea for e-commerce, right? Is like, it doesn't have to be physical, right? Like you could just, if you're like in fitness or something, right? Like, and you're selling like, I don't know, some bands or whatever workout equipment on the front end, you know, upsell them into like a, a, a purely digital members area. Maybe where you give them like weekly meal, uh, grocery list, meal prepping guides, like all that sorts of stuff, right? It doesn't, and you can do a mixture of it. There's no like right or wrong here, right? You could mix some physical, you can mix some digital, you can go pure digital. Uh, I recommend you try and go digital. Uh, I unfortunately can't um, just because I know my market, but you, you could test it out what your market find valuable because then that's pure profit that rolls in. Oh, wow. So good. Um, hey, hey guys. Uh, hey, Dave. Thanks for joining us. Public group customer inner. Oh, people are writing notes. <laughs> um, all right. Let's ask a question from you guys. Um, Yes, Judy, blah, blah, blah. is it possible to sell one product through ClickFunnels? I, I think you could do that. I, I, I'm actually about to launch on Amazon, but I'm using a lead magnet first to capture their info. You don't foresee any problems with Amazon giving me, me a hard time, right? So what was the first part of that? I Frank missed the asked, first part. Frank asked, I'm actually, Peter, comma, I'm actually about to launch on Amazon, but I'm using a lead lead magnet first to capture their info. You don't foresee any problems with Amazon giving me a hard time, right? Oh, so it's like a pre-launch campaign. So yeah, like, so what I'm assuming this is what you're doing. You're just doing like giving them a freebie, building up your email list before you launch on Amazon. It just depends on what you incentivize them to do uh, on Amazon, right? You can't, you can't really incentivize for reviews anymore. Um, People do still, but like, I'm not going to be the one to tell you it's a gray hat, right? Like, I'm not going to be the one to tell you, uh, what I recommend. I usually like to do, uh, and I'm not going to stop you. Obviously you're launching already on Amazon. So you, you do that. But like what I recommend is like, Hey, sell those products first, get customers, right. And build up your email list at the same time with like a discount offer, free plus shipping funnel, right? Cause you're, you're, you're generating leads and you're generating customers, right? You're basically taking somebody right from the lifeline of a lead, like in, entirely. So then when you like, let's say you build up your business to the six figure mark, right? You've got customers, you've got a huge email list of buyers and non buyers. That's when you can be like, okay, well let's unlock a new sales channel, right? Okay. Now let's launch our product on Amazon. Now let's say, Hey, we just launched a new product on Amazon, get a free discount code. And then you can ask them, Hey, if you enjoy the products, don't forget to leave a review. Right. And just, you kind of like subconsciously incentivize them uh, to leave you reviews. Uh, another one is like walmart.com. You can launch it, you know, another sales channel, walmart.com. I always recommend like start caring about yourself first and then help these other businesses. Cause if they, if what happens, like I had a friend that lost a million dollar a month business on Amazon and like Amazon doesn't care about you, right? Like trust me, a million dollars a month is literally nothing to them. They, they truly don't care. Um, I just don't, I just would hate what happened to me or a lot of the other people I've seen, uh, happen to anybody here. So just, you know, be careful, I guess is my, uh, biggest advice there. All right, Frank, be careful. Um, what about selling downloads and Chrome extensions? Oh, I don't think that's a question for Peter. I have no clue. Peter. <laughs> I'm the least techie person ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Okay, coming up with upsells and downsells is difficult for me. Okay, how do you come up with the upsells and downsells uh, that you encounter? Do you form the Facebook group and ask them in there? Do you send them a thank you email and ask them in there? Like, how do you figure out your upsells and downsells? So, so here's so here's my two comma club funnel template, and this is what I all of the students like. All of them are like this because it works. Okay, and before I even tell you this, do never because so many people will hear what I'm about to say and they'll say, "Oh, that's not going to work." Oh, that's my, my business. It won't do that. That doesn't work. Stop. You're you're talking emotionally. You always let the data tell you what is right or what is wrong. So we hit a, have a landing page or a two-step order form, right? That's where we collect the lead information, collect the sale. On the order form, we offer quantity discounts of our product. My numbers are one, two, four, six, eight. I always offer quantity discounts, one, two, four, six, eight. Give them a better and better deal. Uh, you can use like CF Pro tools to like highlight the four, always highlight the four. Okay, and auto select the four. I know we're cutting a little technical here, but like this is the structure to use. I'm writing down all these notes. <laughs> <laughs> and then auto select the four and bestseller highlight the four. Put in an order bump. Easiest order bump in the world is going to say uh, limited edition version of your product is what I usually recommend people do. And obviously it's going to be same cost to you. You're just marketing it as a limited edition version of your product. You can do like expedited shipping, you could do like warranty stuff, you, whatever it is, just put an order bump in there, okay? Just keep it simple. If you have to use an image to explain your order bump, that you're trying too hard, keep it simpler, right? First upsell, just sell them, if you're doing the one, two, four, six, eight model, um, offer them like four, four units of that same product again. Uh, if they say yes or no, doesn't matter, I don't use downsells in e-commerce. Okay, so full disclosure, I don't use down sales. Everybody sees everything, okay? Uh, after that first upsell, we were just selling more of the same product. We're giving them a better deal than what they just saw. Second upsell, same thing. We're just giving them two units this time to give them a little bit better of a deal. Now, the reason this works so well is because subconsciously, the people will be like, wait, I just paid, you know, $34 for this on the order form, but now you're telling me I can get four for like, $24, right? Subconscious people are going to be like, why would I not do that? Right. And you also want to give them a reason to buy. I forget what book I read. Uh, maybe it was like a Jay Abraham book, but you always have to give a reason for anything you're doing in, in, in your marketing. Right. So what's the reason? Okay. So you could set, you could have things like, Hey, you know, uh, makes the perfect gift for family and friends, uh, you know, keep extras around the house. So you have to plant the seed and tell them why they need more. Okay. So that's my first two upsells. Just, I always just sell more of the same thing and you could be done right there. You could literally have that done today and launched and ready. Uh, my upsell number three, that's my continuity. I always put my continuity there uh, because I want them saying yes. Cause I know my conversion rates on those first two upsells is usually uh, between 10 and 20%. Uh, so I know like, Hey, you know what? Those people are going to be really prepped uh, saying yes multiple times before they hit the continuity page, which is really where I wanted them to say yes to. And then upsells four and five is where I just sell them complimentary products. Usually I test products here, testing different things that I'm gonna put in the, uh, in the front end eventually. Now to find those complimentary products, I like to go to uh, uh, Amazon. I just go to Amazon and I look at the frequently bought together. Oh yeah, and, that's so yeah, interesting. Like that's so just simple. all I do. I, I don't even like question it. I always go there or I go look at, uh, Amazon added this, this other one. It's called like customers also searched for uh, uh, it's like underneath the frequently bought together or one of those products. So I'll put those in upsells four and five. Um, and then on the thank you page, uh, we also, uh, I like to push people out to like an Amazon store to make affiliate commissions, push them out to an affiliate offer. Uh, like the, the cool thing about these funnels is like every piece of it is designed to make you money. Like no, there's not a page on this that doesn't make you money, right? Like from the landing page, the moment somebody gives you an email, that's, that's, that's money. And you're, that's, that's money right there for you. Even the thank you page, you're, you're trying to make sales, pushing sales. Uh, so I always recommend like people use that. Like I remember I did on my YouTube channel, I did like a, a review of a Shopify store. It took me eight clicks before I could even buy. Eight clicks, right? On my first click, on my second click, somebody has to have bought. There's nothing else. There's no distractions. With the Shopify store, there's a hundred buttons everywhere. There's cart pages, which are the worst thing ever. Cart pages are terrible because they're, there's so much buyer's remorse there, right? Like if people get excited, they'll be on your Shopify store, putting all these different products in their cart. Then they'll hit your cart page and be like, yeah, I'm not spending that. 
and then <laughs> they don't even buy and you don't even have a way to a lot of times when they get to that cart page you didn't even get the chance to grab their email address yet so you have no way to even follow up with them unless you're doing like some Facebook retargeting right so yeah. the, the reasons the funnel work is because it's like every step of it is a yes or no question there's no Oh, like a bunch of buttons. There's no other products. There's no distractions. That's why you see like 10 to 20% conversion rates on a funnel compared to like the 1.33% conversion rate on a Shopify store. But like, it's insane. Like, and to put that in perspective for anybody bad at math is like 1.33% is like, that's a one, let's say a hundred people come to your website, a one will buy from you. But a funnel, if a hundred people come to you, that means like 10 will buy. Like that the minimum. So it's like, it's, it's, it's like night and day. Like, why wouldn't you put it into the funnel? So uh, that's kind of the structure and how I would, uh, how I'd find different products to put into it. Wow. That was great. That was probably too much. That was probably too much, but. (laughs) No, everyone's like writing down their notes. I'm writing down notes. Dave said it's his first live and he is saying great tips for complimentary products. The Amazon one. Mm-hmm. Um, this is what makes sales funnels better than e-commerce stores many times. Correct. Cool, Dave. Thanks for your input. Hey, Brian. Hey, Miriam. Thanks for joining us. Guys, if you're here live, smash the heart button. I want the rest of the group to benefit from this interview. Uh, Peter is very just, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes so, kind of a little bit deeper, which is what I love because um, beyond just, you know, you guys watching this for the motivation I want you to get those little technical tips because honestly, um, you know, with imperfect implementation, even with that, like if you just take one tip and just apply it today to your current e-commerce store or funnel or whatever, um, what he just told you with the five upsells and how he does that, I would not have known unless I wade through all his YouTube videos probably (laughs) or coaching program or I don't know what. but it's uh, that is why I bring these lives to you guys. And that's why I reach out to experts like Peter to get those golden nuggets um, that normally you would have to go through a lot of information to, to, to absorb. But yeah, let me know if you guys have any more questions. Um, Kevin says 45. What does that mean? Oh, customer journey. Fun. Okay. People are just hashtagging. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so let me, I can talk about that. Like if the customer journey, the question about that is like a customer journey is essentially like somebody that has no idea who you are, right? Like they're just a normal person out there that kind of, let's say they like fishing, right? How do we take that person that has no idea who you are and really get them to buy, but also spend a good amount of money. So that's, that's what the funnel is designed to do, right? The first step of the lifeline of a lead really is to grab an email address to, to get them to qualify themselves to you, right? You don't, you miss that. That's the most, that's one of the most important parts is the the qualification process. If somebody's not going to give you an email address, they're not going to give you any money. Like I promise you that, like if somebody's not even willing to give you an email address, they're not going to give you money. And that's why we have landing pages. That's why we have a two step order form, right? To get them to say, yes, I am interested. Right? So that's where we qualify a subscriber. Then immediately, right? We don't wait. We don't do anything. We, we need to qualify them as a buyer immediately, right? So that's what the order form is for. And you could do this all on one single page if you're doing a two-step order form. And then we also, after that, we want to qualify like the buyers in heat, right? The ones that are real pain, right? So those are the ones that are going to be like taking all of our upsells, okay? And we want to try to ascend them up our, you know, our, through our back end, through our value ladder. And that's where the continuity page comes in as well. Right. So we basically took somebody maybe right off the street that's kind of interested in, in our product, qualified them, qualified them as a buyer, qualified them as a buyer in heat, and then also ascended them up to, you know, our continuity program as well. Right. And you did that all in one shot. Right. You can't do that on, the, on a, any like a storefront. It's not possible to do that on a storefront. Yeah. No, it's not because they have so many places to click. They'll click mm-hmm. everywhere. Um, yeah, you don't what you have to be in control of what they're doing. Right. That's again, that's why the conversions are so much better on the funnel because there's no like question. There's no, you know, there's no home button. There's no support. Right. Yeah. You can have your support email address, but there's no nowhere else for them to click out to besides like your terms and service and like oh, the privacy policy and stuff in your footer. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, it's, Kim, are you available to talk about affiliate marketing after this session? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, we're, let's focus. <laughs> Darren, the how same do you find- thing goes for affiliate marketing though, right? Oh. I see a lot of people even do wrong with affiliate marketing is that you, you just go, like, it, it's, it doesn't matter what I sell. Like, it's always going to be the same exact thing that I'm doing now. Like, what's the offer? Like, okay, you want people to sign up for you from ClickFunnels or whatever? Yeah. Like, for me, like, for me, like, hitting Dream Card was just a byproduct. I never I t I tried to do it. But, um, like, if let's say you want to get people, like, say you want to win or whatever, get the affiliate commissions from ClickFunnels, right? Like, all you have to do is just, like, put something out there that's going to get them to sign up under you. Like, continuing education, right? Show them something, right? The reason it works for me is because I show people how to use e-commerce and sales funnels together. So they're, and I give people templates for free all the time, right? So what's like your niche that you want to like, say you want to do it for real estate agents, right? Go start a YouTube channel teaching real estate agents how to use sales funnels, go to whatever. It doesn't, you know, whatever your niche is, go start teaching them and, and give them like free share funnels. That's like, that's my strategy for it. But like, what's the offer, right? Why are you going to get them? Why are they going to get, uh, uh, why are they going to buy from you instead of just going to clickfunnels.com and signing up? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Darren has a question. Thanks for asking, Darren. How do you find a product that isn't saturated? That's an interesting question, and I kind of want to ask that too. Or I, it, it doesn't matter. Until I don't you feel like the world I is saturation. so big. <laughs> I love. I like saturation because it validates. A, a red ocean for me right it validates that there's people buying stuff like a lot of people are so scared of co competition but I, I like i love competition because it just tells me okay there's stuff in here right so like if you have this bloody red ocean of people buying and selling the same widget that's fine let's go pick that widget out right and then we go into our blue ocean and we're like okay well what else do these people that are buying these widget need okay yeah. What else do they need? Like you have to know who your current customer, who the perfect customer is. And then you wrap the offer around it and then go back in and sell, sell it. Cause now you have a differentiating factor. You have a unique selling proposition, right? You have a new unique offer now that those people haven't seen before, right? That's like bundled together, right? It's all about perceived value, right? As long as your perceived value is greater than your competitors, you'll win. Yeah. Like how, um, a lot of people who cr created things like, um, like even like Bill Gates, he didn't make DOS. He, he just uh, like bundled certain information. Um, well, who made that quote? Information put together differently is. is I know what your quote you're trying to say. Ah, I forgot. Like, <laughs> I, I know what you're saying. Like the people put, uh, will pay for, I think it was like Dan Kennedy. I forget. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, uh, but I know what you're saying. I know what you're, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So in that in that case, I feel like your method, you will never have to worry about your bills ever again. You know, like you could just go anywhere and, you know, there's a product in the man. You can take that, figure out what people want around that, that people aren't doing because they're all focused on, okay, physical product this is all physical and you're getting that one thing. Once you buy it, here it is, it's shipped to you. And you're saying, hey, actually, I can give you all the things around that that's physical or digital and take you through this journey where it will really help you out, get the, the result that you want, not just a product in hand. Yeah. And That's so like one thing I do and again, it's like, you always want to stay top of mind. Like so many people stop at that first sale, but like, think about things that you can like bundle together that are like really cheap. Like some good ones are like stickers, right? Like one of our fishing ones uh, that we did was a little sticker cheat sheet. So basically it said, Oh, like what's the weather outside and what color is the water? So it, that does matter for people that fish. They'll know um, <laughs> like you, you might not fish. So you don't know. Uh, but this little sticker, they can stick it on their tackle boxes. They can stick it on their boats and they can always reference it. And it has our logo in on it. Right. So it's like always there when they're fishing, they're thinking about us. Right. And, and guess how much this costs? Like five cents each, literally yeah. five cents. each. Yes. It does add lowers our margin. Like by, a fraction, but guess what? Now we're always top of mind. Let's say they're going out with a friend. They have their tackle box and he's like asking, Oh, what kind of fishing lure should I use? Oh, well, let me check. Oh, where did you get that? That's cool. Oh, I'll check them out later. Right. You look, it's always, it's, it's like a loop basically always happening. Um, Keychains work well, magnets for refrigerators. 
I, this, I'm doing that for my supplement, little, little tease. I haven't even told my audience this, but like that, what I'm doing, my insert card for my supplement is yeah. going to be a magnet that they put on their fridge, right? They put it on their fridge and it tells them when they should be taking it. Right. So it's oh. always there. They always remember. Cause if people, like I said, if people aren't doing your product, then what's the point, right? Like if they're not using your product, then it's, it's useless. You're never going to get them to come by again. Like I need them to always come by, come back, come by from me again. So your product could be just a sticker or yeah. So that's, that's no that's a bundled, bundled into it. Bundled into, yeah. The, the stickers, the top of mind portion mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then, you know, a physical product can't always be top of mind, but something that's related, like the weather sticker, mm -hmm. yeah. they can see your brand. That's it's, that's why I say the offer is is not just throwing stuff in there. It's strategic. It's all it's all strategic and be like, okay, and it doesn't always make sense to do like a physical product like that. Um, it, it depends on what you're doing. Again, it, it it really it's it's so different for every every niche, right? Like. I knew with my niche, they like physical stuff, but like I know in the fitness niche, like I know that like forever and ever and ever people will like, like fitness is such a crazy niche because like there's been so many like meal prep guides. There's been so many recipes, like, but the, people love that stuff. Right. And it works. Right. So like, those are such easy things like grocery lists, um, uh, like any sort of like app, maybe, uh, how to cook the food that they're going to go buy, like really low cost things that just take you a little bit of time to create. And again, this goes back to actually enjoying what you do because this is going to be like pulling teeth. <laughs> to, to, <laughs> and you don't have to make it yourself. I don't want you to think like you, you have to make this. Like you can go buy PLRs. They're low quality, but hey, it's better than nothing. You can go hire people on like Upwork or free up, get them to create your information products. So yeah. Oh yeah, free up. I know Nathan. <laughs> I love free up. Pretty cool. Yeah, I like free up too. Um, yeah. So top of mind, that's, that's really cool. Um, I actually apply that in a similar sense to my Chrome. I have a Chrome extension. I teach people how to create monthly reoccurring with Chrome extensions. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, I, I was like, okay, what was their number? What was that thing that stops them from having top of mind or, or be able to proliferate, proliferate top of mind? I created a thing called my own extension where no matter what industry they're from, they can customize their own Chrome extension with a dashboard and the, there's a search bar and that search bar can be custom to their um, website. If they have any searchable store or anything that's searchable. So mm -hmm. instantly they have, they, they have that, but they can give that to their audience immediately. And then, so they own desktop real estate kind of like their vision because it's a little tiny Chrome extension. And um, yeah, and that works pretty well for me. And it's just something super small, simple, digital that I don't like, it doesn't cost me that many pennies, but that's yeah. really useful. And so yeah, that all these ways, these strategies. <laughs> Thanks so much for sharing yours. Yeah, no problem, I like that no sticker problem. one. This is actually from sticker, uh, temporary <laughs> tattoos. <laughs> yeah. Clip funnels but, is great they at it. Like, up. They didn't have, they don't have their brand name right there. <laughs> but click funnels does it great. They are, they're always doing things like that, right? They're sending people physical stuff and you have to mix it both, right? Like, the people in the, the e-commerce, so it's like e-commerce and digital. Like I love use, I do both. I love with, even with our digital stuff, like I send physical stuff because people need something. Like I'm telling you, like with e-commerce, we're spoiled because of the Amazon effect. Like people anticipate getting something in the mail. There's something they can touch, but like with, when they buy like a, a, a course or, or whatever they buy, right? There's, that feeling isn't there, right? They don't have the anticipation. So we'll do like little, you know, we'll, we'll send t-shirts to our people like, like that you can't get anywhere else. Like, so if you join our, our program, you get like the empire builder t-shirt, right? You can only get that there. If you join our inner circle, you get this t-shirt, which you can only get if you're in our inner circle, right? So like, you have to think about like, how can you bundle these things together? Like, um, like I know people that, and I want to do this soon is like, we have like workbooks in our program for every single module that people go through. And like, I want to be able to print those and, and send that to them because then it's like, oh man, like I'm, I'm like in school, like I'm, I'm, I'm legit learning. I see it on my shelf, you know, it's a whole different feeling, whole different feeling when somebody has something they can uh, actually like touch, you know? Yeah. And oh, oh, on that note, um, Hey guys, thanks for joining us. Hey, Usman. Hey Marcus. 
Um, you guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Dave says you can also deliver digitally a good thing in today's world. Um, but on that note, do you see a lot of people flowing uh, from e-commerce plus digital? Or do you see like digital people going to like adding like a USB stick for their physical product that bundles their digital? Or like what do you see in terms of how people are flowing do they just do it anyways eventually in their I think the, digital, the digital people i think are better at it because usually the digital people that sell digital products have to be better marketers right so they're always yeah. thinking of these kind of things like hey what can we put out there right that's why russell has a free plus shipping book that's why like what's his name i forget what his name but he sent like a usb stick right with some with some content on it right like it's real when you when you get it in your hand um but like for e-commerce yeah nobody's doing what i'm saying to, to you like literally besides my students no one is doing it because people in e-commerce are like a lot of people that are in it are just in it for like a get rich quick scheme they're just trying to you know launch something make some money which is great but like they don't most people in e-commerce don't care about their customers and that's why i'm like i'll expose that opportunity all day long right like a, a lot of people they're not in it to build something right they're they're, they're in it to just like, I, I, honestly, I, I, most people probably in e-commerce shouldn't probably be in it, but um, you got to be in it for like the, the right reasons and a good mixture, no matter what you're selling. Like I said, if you're doing digital and physical, mix them both, right? It's in e-commerce, mix some digital in there, right? Because again, it's like the wild west. It's a great way to increase the perceived value of your product and stand out from, from all of your competitors. Yeah, what you're teaching is really huge because no, yeah, people who do e-commerce are just faceless behind their store. Most of the time, uh, they don't care. It just gets shipped out. I mean, I, I care about my customers when I sell a used car part from my yard, but then I'm like thinking, hey, I'm not really providing them anything else and i don't even think about like that digital portion even when i have a digital business too I, yeah. I don't even think about it so if i don't think about that oh my gosh there's so many people who probably don't even yeah they don't care and the, the goal is the same it does, like i said it doesn't matter if you're selling like a digital course or or a or e-commerce like it like i said i build my businesses the same way it's always what's the result that the person wants like what what is it right okay they want to you know build a side income for themselves okay well here's what i did right here's what my students are doing to find success here's the plan right now let's get you there let's see what we can do to get you there right um like we we, we have like 13 people now on e-commerce empire builders like we're hiring trainers and stuff we're doing weekly q a's like getting the result for them right like getting them the result that's my goal right same thing with e-commerce right it's the e-commerce, like, it's crazy how much, like, people will say, oh, you, you sell courses. Like, I'm telling you right now, like, if you can't sell, like, a $5 free plus shipping offer and you think you can go sell, like, a $1,000, $2,000 course, you're crazy. You're, you're, you're absolutely crazy, right? Uh, e-commerce is so much simpler. I was able to run my seven-figure business by myself, basically, and a couple of VAs, right? I have 13 people on e-commerce empire builders working on our program, bringing in trainers, doing all those things. It's so much more difficult. Right. So I, I hate when I see people say that because it's like it's it's like night and day difficulty rating e-commerce, 100 percent, 100 percent. But uh, that's that's like my mission is to show like, hey, look, this is my strategy. It doesn't matter what you sell. Um, the, the strategy always comes down to, hey, what's the result we're getting for people? How do we package this together to help them get there? That's it's it, it, in its simplest sense. And how is your course or your program different than what's out there because i mean i don't know what's out there i'm not i don't know the different courses and why they're different so i want to hear from you like why are why is your course different and um yeah what makes it fun or what makes it interesting? I'm, first of all like we put so much money into this into this program it's it's incredible i just hired um, a good friend of mine, he's another two comma club member. Uh, he's now part of us. He's now coming in full time as, as one of our trainers, another two comma club person coming in, helping the community, right? We, uh, uh, firstly, as far as training goes, the reason we're different is because of everything we just talked about, right? <laughs> like a subscription, subscription boxes, continuity, digital products. Like I said, all of that stuff is in it. So as far as training, I don't think anybody can, I, per, I, I know, 
that nobody stands uh, uh, stands ground against us. Um, the amount of, like I said, the amount of trainers we have, the weekly Q and A's, the weekly support. I mean, anytime somebody answers a question inside our like our student mastermind group, I mean, immediately like I'm jumping in, right? Uh, Jordan's jumping in. He's another two comic club writer, uh, two comic club winner. Uh, I have two of our other uh, students that I want to bring on as trainers. They uh, they came in and they uh, the one did fifty thousand dollars or sixty some thousand dollars. It's like second month in. Other one did ten thousand dollars. So I brought them in. I was like, okay, well, how about you guys? You guys want to help other people, right? So we continue to grow, um, continuing always to uh, we're redoing the entire members area with all like new fresh content. Uh, we also have like I don't know if you see them, but we have like our Empire Builder Awards. They're right there. They're like little crystals. That's so cool. They're like little crystals. So like if you hit ten thousand dollars a month you get this award. If you get $50,000 a month, you get this one. And we have our seven figure award. So we've got like, like over a dozen, 15, 16 people, um, in, in those awards. We don't have seven figure student yet, but we do have, uh, I think like eight people in like $50,000 a month, which is incredible. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what makes us different right there. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Actually, Aaron says, um, what would you say is your most eye opening module of your course? That's interesting. Is there one or is yeah, there... there is. So ours is different, right? Like, cause when, when I redid the program, um, the one thing, so we have like a beta launch. Like when I launched this thing, like this was like a year ago, I took beta people through it and I realized like, like the technical stuff, like all of you can do it. Like it's easy. Like you, you'll, you can learn this stuff, but like the hard part when I look over like my life is like, the ups and downs like entrepreneur this is it this this is what it is up down up down you think you're doing everything right then you're down then you're it's like it's terrible um but it's like that's like where uh we came up with okay let's let's like release like a really amazing mindset module and that's like the first thing i have people go through and it's not like some woo woo mindset it's like a, like literally an in-depth where we give people like this empire builder journal that you read every single morning and night like i read oh. mine every, every single morning and night basically we go in there um, it, what this module basically does for you is it, it, we identify where you're currently at. Like, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. We need to identify where are you, right? Like, what are the things you've achieved in your life? What are the things you want to achieve in your life? We like, we have to get really brutally honest with each other. All right. Um, not with you in your, in your journal, you're writing all this stuff in your journal. And then we have to identify, okay, what's the vision, right? Like, what's the vision? Like, what's your ideal self? Like, if, if you could have anything in the world, what would it be? Put it in here. And there's a whole process that we, we go through. Um, but basically, you read this journal every single morning, every single night. It takes me like 15 minutes to read this thing. It's not like a short, oh, like, oh, I want a Lamborghini. Like, it's not like that. Uh, like, it's more strategic, more in-depth, really getting to understand yourself and understanding where you want to go. Um, that for me is probably the most powerful one. I've had the most, out of all the modules I've had, even the successful students, most people say, hey, that was the most eye-opening like training that I've ever been through. Just like that first, that first module, just because it's so different. Like you don't, you don't really uh, like see that often in a course. Cause like, that's for me, it's not a course. Like I don't have multiple courses. I'll never have multiple courses. Ever. I haven't, I don't even know how people have multiple courses because like I spend literally so much time keeping that one up to date. Like <laughs> I, I couldn't imagine adding more complexity into the business. So that one, uh, I think that's like my, uh, the most eye opening module for sure. Because all the other things, it's it's like, okay, well, what's the market? What's the laser targeted niche? Okay, so let's structure the funnel. Let's structure the offer, right? Then, you know, Facebook ads, influencers, and all that stuff. Like, that's the stuff, like, the, the execution is easier, right? But, like, as you're executing, right, and you're, you're maybe going through some struggles and stuff, you need a place to go back to to see how far you've come, right? Like, a lot of people can't do that, and that's what the Mindset Journal forces you to do. That is so good. I, uh, I was at the Kajabi conference like a few weeks ago and there was a speaker. Kajabi is all about courses, right? And, there, mm. and a speaker went up and the, she was like, you know the mindset stuff? You guys put it in the beginning of your courses. And then a lot of them were like nodding. And then she's like, you know what's really successful? If you have the mindset stuff at the beginning of every module for a little bit. And so every single time they're coming into the module, they have mindset and then technique versus here's one mindset module uh, and a couple in the beginning and then all just technical throughout the way. And yeah. I thought that that was like so good. <laughs> yeah, no, that, 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 so that's really sense. smart. I, I'd be curious how to structure that though. Just because like, 
Yeah. So, because our module, like, there's like eight or so videos in it. But yeah, no, yeah, that, 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 that does make sense, right? So before somebody starts on like the technical portion of it, hey, let's prep you before you go into it. Yeah, I maybe because, you know, they're watching module one one day and then the next day they're just like that mental stuff is all gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're yeah. back to the technical and they're like, oh, shoot, this is hard. Yeah. Um, but like from the way that you speak about your course and the way that you care, it makes me feel like, wow, I would be in really good hands if I am entering into any of your programs. That's what it makes me feel like. And that's, guys, what let me want, know. that's the way I want people to feel like I <laughs> like for me, like even with our YouTube channel, like I will never like there's a lot of people out there that will sell you on like a fake life that is very far out of reach. Like for me, like I've like my morals are so much like I can't do it. Like even if I could like showcase the things I do have, like I wouldn't do it because it's been 10 years. Like for me to tell you that you're going to be able to like go through all of that that I did in, in a month is that it's not fair to you. Right. So I always, I'm always brutally honest with everybody. Like it's hard work to get here, but like, I'm telling you like that 10 years that I've done this, um, I could ne I would never take anything back. Right. Because like it's, I, I get to wake up every single morning and do what I want. Right. I'm working, I'm working a lot. Right. But I'm doing something for myself. And like that made it all worth. It. And that's what I want for other people too. But I'm not going to sell people on like, you know, a fancy car or something like that by no means. <laughs> yeah. So I just love it. It's just, you feel so genuine and so good. <laughs> uh, guys, um, he, he does have a mastermind. I'm going to drop the link after uh, this. And uh, if you guys want to join and be in good hands with Peter, um, he has done this like for a decade. He knows the ins and outs and he's been teaching for the past year and I know even myself as a course creator I've been teaching for the past five months and and I do have courses that are like a thousand dollars now and people are coming in um, I know how hard and so much time it takes to really really care and uh, from what Peter said he built out his team he brings in people who are two comma club winners um, that means that he really, really cares about your success. So uh, <laughs> I'll drop the link. And um, we. I always tell people like it's it's like and yeah, check out the the class, guys, for sure. But like, if I'm not success, if you're not successful, then I'm not successful. Like it's like fact. Like think about it. Like nobody would buy the program if there's no success stories behind it, right? So like, I need you to be successful. That's what I wish more course creators mastermind owners would do like focus on getting the students the results because that's what sells your your stuff that's what no, nothing else does yeah and i think someone asked you for your supplement link do you have your supplement store up already so you can you can watch that journey on youtube but i'm not releasing it yet oh <laughs> next it's month we have a launch plan launch. Secret. okay <laughs> you can follow the journey on uh, we have like four or five videos already going through the product research pricing all that stuff on the youtube channel yeah, and I just dropped the link to um, Peter's course. Uh, you can watch his, it leads to a, a webinar, right? Like a- mm -hmm. Well, we, I go through this process kind of more in depth, like just showing how I set up the funnel, showing the landing pages, showing the continuity pages, and more visually, obviously me and you are just talking here, but more over the shoulder, showing you how it's all set up, so. Yeah, and I think what you're teaching is not just about e-commerce, it's great that I think you position yourself very well um, because there's so many e-commerce people who don't even think about that. And they're like, Oh, wait a minute, maybe I can do that. And then they enter, but there's millions of sellers online. Right. But what you're teaching is probably applicable to someone who's getting into like whatever the heck. <laughs> the, it's, like, the it's, like I said, the like, same pro the process is the same, no matter what you sell. So, yeah. So yeah. that's great. That's amazing. That's awesome. Um, guys, if you want to go and check out more about Peter, click on the link that I just dropped. And um, he, like, if you haven't watched, if you're just jumping in randomly right now, like some of you guys, Jeffrey, um, just know that uh, watch the replay because he actually tells you very actionable, specific tips that you can apply to your e-commerce business today. And that's, to me, I'm like, okay, great. I'm not 
getting a, I love your stories, but I'm not just getting a bunch of stories. I'm getting some golden nuggets <laughs> here and there. So definitely watch the replay so you can learn more about Peter, know his journey, and then where he's gotten, and then the the reason why he's teaching today. And it's just it's just an awesome, amazing journey that I've gotten to hear about. <laughs> and um, I want you guys to definitely watch the replay if you've missed whatever happened, what we've been talking about so far. But um, we're about to wrap this up because I think we've answered a lot of your questions and Peter has answered a lot of mine and I know he's extremely busy. Um, but so thank you so much, Peter. I am going to uh, end, I'm gonna click end live video. Is there any last minute not last minute. Is there any last thing you would say about to my audience about what um, anything? <laughs> any? I think like like I said, um, like there. I don't know. Were you at Funnel Hacking Live? Yeah, I was. Were you yeah. Watching? So, and I know, like, you oh know, yeah, you were. You collected there was your a, board. There was a quote at that conference, and it was, and this is like something I like live by now, right? And it's, I've lived like this by this for so long, but I never heard the quote before, and it just means so much to me. I always love to share this one now whenever I get a chance and it was from Garrett White's speech and I know Garrett caused all this controversy whatever that's not what I'm you know talking about oh yeah but, that was the oh I remember that yeah. oh. <laughs> and again I don't care what whatever your opinions are on that but he said yeah. a quote uh during his speech and he said heavy is the head that wears the crown and I think that's like such a powerful uh uh, uh quote uh to live by especially uh for entrepreneurs because like you're gonna wake up some mornings um, not wanting to work. You're not going to want to do anything. And, and it's okay to take breaks once in a while. But like, remember, like, the, the, uh, like the, I love the way he's like some of the quotes he said, like, he's like, like, if the king doesn't rise, the kingdom dies. Right? And it's so true. Like your business is done. If you don't go in and start doing it, like who else is going to do it for you besides you? Right. There's nobody else that's going to care about your business as much as you. Um, so like to, to leave you guys off, like, expect that there's going to be days that you don't want to wake up. You don't want to work on your business. But on the other side of that, like he's like an amazing life for you. Like for, you know, you get to wake up and just build something that you can have. Like it's, it's the coolest thing ever. Um, so uh, I want to leave everybody with that. All right, cool. Thanks everyone. So Peter, I'm going to click end live, which ends the live. And then I'll say bye to you very quick uh, <laughs> personally. So I'm going to click end live. Bye everyone. Thanks for joining us. Bye. And okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> no problem. No problem. I hope that could have. I hope that was good. Yeah, that's great. Um, I I want to uh, you know, not only interview you and and, and give exposure, but I want to give you uh something free. I mean, maybe you don't care about it, but um, it is for you to propagate to your audience. It's uh, I'm in the Chrome extension world. And the Chrome extension world, um, let me just share my screen, is about uh, owning desktop real estate. Mm -hmm. And so I did create something that I can give as a gift to a lot of uh, just influencers or people. Um, mm -hmm. You get your own extension and you don't have to do any kind of work. All you have to do is, uh, you know, it's just a dashboard. And let me see, let me just show you real quick. Cause I think, I think you'll get a kick out of it. Um, it's a dashboard here. And I log into my dashboard. Let me see. And I can change all these. I just uh, spoke to Ryan Helms. Um, all these links into whatever the heck is from you. It's called your own extension. And it's uh, white label to you. You give a link. And then they can just download it. And then um, they nice. have you on, your, on their desktop. And a lot of people aren't freaks like me. I have like a million extensions. A lot of people only have like four or five like sitting here. So you own their vision. Yes. So if, I mean, it could help you. I don't know, but I feel like if they have something that reminds you to go back to your world, you know, you could be like, hey, my latest YouTube video is here or my latest thing is here. Then they don't have to keep on bugging your team or you for like, what's that link? What's this link? What's that link? You know, what's coming up? Um, then it could cut down on a lot of like uh, questions about what's your link. You could just be like, you have my app, don't <laughs> get my app. And, uh, and they can't log out, they can't get out. And this search is customizable to whatever your uh, yes. website is. Yes, send this over, I love this, this is yeah. awesome. Yeah. So then they can just download it from like the Chrome store or whatever? Chrome like store, yes. 
Yeah, like, and, and it's- What's the link I have to send them? Like, Chrome. let's see. It's the Chrome Web Store um, here. It looks like this, my own extension. Um, it looks like this. I just launched it, so there's 169 users, um, but those are not counting like all the users who are just using it from one account, from one person. Let's say you give it to a thousand people, it wouldn't count all those people. Mm -hmm. It only counts the actual users with a dashboard. So they have to download that extension first or? Yeah, they just click, here, I'll just demo it to you, okay? I'm gonna remove this, remove from Chrome, and I'm one of your followers. I'm like, Peter, I wanna get your stuff. And you're like, well, download my app. And I'm like, okay, how? You give them this link here, and it's Chrome Web Store, so people know, you know, Google, they're familiar with it. It's not a random, strange site. They click Add to Chrome, Add Extension, and then it gets added. And the thing that they have to put in is an email address that's linked to you. So it could be a dummy email address you could put in, but it could also be, um, uh, you know, your email address. But right now, it's my first iteration, and it just makes it easy. It pops up, uh, you know, it just pops up with the email. Oh, so they just have to enter like my email address that I sign up with this or whatever. Yeah. But then they don't have uh, if so for you, you have the login here as a dashboard and you just change the links here. It's super, it's just stupid, simple, add new URL uh, picture link. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. And um, the search bar is super simple. You just have to have it behind the equal sign of whatever it is. So I, I was messing around. I was like, my friend has a multi-million million dollar acne company. That's ironic because I still have acne. And um, I just like customized it, the, the link to her, her search site. And it, all it is, is you just take this URL right before the, right at the equal sign. And then you just put it into here uh, before the query. And so anything they search, I just search kit, it will actually search their store. It actually searches your store. So if it's not a store, it's a, I don't know, blog or whatever the heck. Yeah, for sure. It searches Sounds your thing. For sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. Does that sound complicated? Because I'm like, I'm trying to make a super simple process. The, the second part, yes. Okay. The part <laughs> where you send them the link yeah, and like, then they so, click no, add. that I got with the email, but then like the query thing was confusing. Oh, oh no. Okay. Look, I just searched for something, right? I searched for the word kit. It's whatever's before that search word and you just paste it in here. Yeah. But do I need to do that? Oh, like, well, it, no, because it will be just general Google. Like, I don't even want that search function. I just want them to have an app that just says, Hey, check out the latest YouTube video. Hey, watch the channel. Like, that's all I want. Oh, well, like, you I don't can need have that them search, search your YouTube channel. Let's see YouTube. Let's make sure that they can search your YouTube channel. Uh, Peter Prue. Hey, I have to, I have to get off here at a uh, three fifteen. I have a call. Um, let me shoot me. Like I will use this app hundred percent fast. I'll make this. I'll create it. Give me awesome. your email address. I'll make it for you. And then I'll give it to you. It, it doesn't, uh, I'll make sure the search searches your YouTube channel. Awesome. Yeah. I a hundred percent will use this thing is awesome. All right, cool. All right. Cool. Have fun. I have a yeah. meeting too. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. All right, see ya. Oh yeah, if you like that video, then you will love all the resources that I have over at kimcdang.com. That is K-I-M-C-D-A-N-G.com. There you will find all my courses, my extensions, all the offers that um, I have, as well as a lot of free resources if you are just getting started.